Call the meeting of the uh, City Council Finance Committee to order for Monday evening, December 7, 2015. It's about 8 just about 8.05 uh, p.m. Council, Chairman, approves. thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to, before the meeting starts, take a moment of personal privilege, if I may. Uh, the City of Brockton uh, has a new constituent that joined us this past week. And uh, I know the public <laughs> isn't going to believe this, but <laughs> Josiah Moses Rodriguez Rebello was born ah. this week. And we have a new grandfather with us, Councilor Rodriguez. Welcome, Granddad. Thank you, sir. Pleasure. Um, Councilors, just uh, before we begin the, uh, the agenda, also, I received uh, notification uh, just a few days ago from a very good friend of ours and a former colleague here in the City Council Chambers for, I think it was about 18 years. Uh, you all know who he is, City Councilor Todd Petty. Councilor Petty um, made a letter request to me uh, requesting he would like to speak before the City Council Finance Committee meeting on this evening, December 7, 2015, regarding an issue that is on our agenda. He indicated that the matter um, is the City of Brockton approving an agreement between the City and Stonehill College in which the City would provide sewer services to the College. He thanks, uh, thank, thank you for your attention to this matter and is signed by Todd uh, Petty. Uh, at this point in time, I'm going to just offer out unless somebody is going to uh, renege or not allowing him to speak, but I don't think there should be um, a problem. Um, he just wants to s speak just briefly. Uh, he was a part of this whole process for the many years he sat here. So if anybody is, is opposed to that, then please say so. Seeing none, uh, Councilor Petty, I'm going to allow you to come up and, and say a few words, three to five minutes. Keep it on this particular topic. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for... Uh, yeah, excuse me one second. Yes. Just I'm going I'm to have the clerk read the order to what you're speaking on. Order that the City Council approves the execution of the proposed 20-year agreement between the City and Stonehill College. This agreement provides the term and conditions under which the City would provide sewer services to the College. That's, that's, you don't need to write, read the rest because right. the, we're not right onto it as of yet, but that's what the order is. Thank you. Council Petty. Council. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for honoring my request to uh, appear before this Finance Board tonight. I appreciate the opportunity to speak on an issue uh, that is near and dear to my heart that uh, I first began discussing back in 2008. And I want to thank the representatives from Stonehill College to my right for being here this evening in support of the, of the agreement that uh, has um, so far um, then looked upon positively between Stonehill College and the City of Brockton. Um, members of the Finance Committee, um, do you have, did you pass out a copy to each Everybody member? Everybody has a copy, Council. This right, yes? Yeah, they do. Do each member have a copy of this? Thank you. As you can see, back in 2008, uh, when I was on a City Council, uh, my objective back then was what is it that we can all do together to make things better for the residents of the City of Brockton in terms of rates and um, taxes? And I looked at um, many different things, and one of them being the uh, Stonehill um, sewer agreement uh, when Stonehill began um, e expanding. And um, as it says in here in the second paragraph, it, it's what's right for the city, and it's, uh, it's also what's uh, right uh, for Stonehill College as well. And I just want to thank the, uh, the Chief Financial Officer, Jay Condon, and his staff, and Larry Rowley from the DPW, and I want to thank the mayor, uh, for keeping this on the forefront um, and uh, bringing it to uh, this evening's um, uh, meeting. So again, I just want to say thank you. And uh, some things are worth the wait. Some things are worth the wait. And this is proof positive that when you start something and you follow it through and others follow it through when you're no longer a member of the, uh, the council, um, that it's really a good feeling and it's, um, it's, it's going to be a great um, uh, benefit to the city of Brockton, to the ratepayers, and to the students of Brockton High School as well that may attend Stonehill College in the future. So again, Mr. Chairman, I thank you for allowing me to speak before you tonight. Uh, members of the Finance Committee, I hope you uh, look at this favorably and, uh, and uh, vote for it favorably uh, towards the next city council meeting. Again, thank you very, very much. Appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you, Council, for your, for your words. Thank you for being, being here this evening. Madam uh, Clerk, Mr. Chairman, uh, Councilor Sullivan. If I could, I'd like to take number three out of order. Second. second. Motion has been made and seconded. We take item number three out of order. All in favor of that? Opposed? Item three out of order. Madam Clerk, please read the, uh, the order. The resolve. 
resolved that the pastor Roberto Silvera of the Universal Missionary Church and or his designee come before the Finance Committee to discuss the efforts, initiatives, and proposals being utilized to address the series issues of homelessness within the city of Brockton, invited Pastor Roberto Silvera and or his designee, United Missionary Church. Mr. Chairman. Councilor Sullivan. I, uh, I want to thank uh, my colleague, uh, Ward 7 Councilor Shirley Azak. Uh, myself and Councilor Azak filed this resolve. Uh, we invited Pastor Roberto to come here. And what triggered um, the resolve is that uh, Councilor Azak and I attended every Friday morning at the Universal Church um, at 9 o'clock. Uh, there's a, uh, a round table uh, where we discussed um, the, uh, the plaguing issue of homelessness. Um, we had wonderful, we had Dennis Sullivan there, we had Charlie Pierce, we had a lot of just quality people. And the pastor opens up his church, and it's every Friday. Any elected official or anybody who wants to go, by all means, please. Um, but Councilor Isaac and I thought it was uh, more than appropriate uh, to have the pastor come here tonight to discuss the initiatives and the actions. Uh, it's not a cure-all. We're not going to cure homelessness tonight. It's phase one. It's going to be hopefully many, many, many rounds of discussion. But at the end of the day, this is step one of many, many steps. So with that being said, Pastor, I'd like to invite you uh, to come before us tonight. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Good evening. Okay. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Councillors, thank you very much for the privilege to be here and uh, the opportunity to bring this idea. And my name is Roberto Silver. I'm a pastor of the Universal Missionary Church at uh, 30 North Main Street in Brockton. Our church is located next to the notorious Par uh, Perkins Park. The Main Spring uh, Homeless Shelter sits on the side uh, on the other side of the park. We have been at that location for, for years. We minister primarily to the poor and the homeless. I'm sorry, I need to hold this up a little bit. Excuse me. We offer a personal support and counseling and carrying out projects that include uh, the parking cleanup, events, weddings, and unfortunately too many uh, funerals. We put uh, on a breakfast for 80 to 100 people every Sunday morning and dinners for as many as <coughs> 775 on Thanksgiving, Christmas and Easter. In addition to our humanitarian and religion service, we host a non-sectarian uh, current event discussion group every Friday morning. <coughs> Councilor at large, uh, Robert Sullivan and uh, Ward 7 Councilor Shirley Azak, Join us, uh, us at the, our session on November 6th, the Friday after the election day. At that time, we express uh, our belief that a daytime resource center for the homeless is very much need in Brockton. Councilor Sullivan and uh, uh, Azak, I'm sorry, heard us out and graciously invite us to present our ideas to the full council tonight. We believe that the research center is needed for five key reasons. First, in Brockton has more than 400 homeless adults. Many of them have no place to go during the day. The 180 or so that stay at the shelter are required to leave at 7.30 every morning, most morning unless it is under 32 degrees. Many of the homeless end up in the Perkins Park and or hanging around downtown area carrying um, all their belongings. Second, most of the homeless people need structure and guidance for, for their lives. Third, they need help and support more than the rest of the population. Fourth, they need uh, education training. And fifth, they need an opportunity. The Daytime Research Center uh, we envision will therefore include job and business devel development projects that make um, use of the skills that already exist among Brockton's homeless population. Projects include the establishing uh, landscaping business, maintenance bu uh, and building renovation companies, a clearinghouse and a source of ref referral for drug and alcohol and mental health research and counseling. At least one 
reading based discussion group each day. They will range from detox option to current events, interview preparation and job training. A secure place to live belongs while they are attending programs, charge ele their electronics and to have a shower. Supervise access to a computer lab and dedicate GED studying area. The benefits of the establishing, to establishing a daytime resource center will include, it will lead to the creation of a new job for the homeless and Brockton, will be an asset in putting abandoned building back in the tax roll, it will enable us to centralize service uh, for the homeless, it will give them daily opportunity to grow as an individual and become better job candidates. It will give a safe, productive place for homeless people to go during, uh, during the day. Moreover, we expect the Daytime Resource Center to be self-sufficient. We will generate income, for example, through uh, renting out a storage space and many other, other projects. We plan to model our daytime resource center on existing successful programs in cities of Calgary in West Canada and uh, Pebble Street or Pebble Street in Portland, Maine. We are already collaborating in this effort with other church, non-profit organizations like Shore to Shore Mission Network, Main Spring House, Teen Challenge, and others. A number of volunteers, including many who are homeless. The mayor's office is all aware of our goals and has been generally supportive. Our overriding belief is that we can turn the homeless problem in Brockton into an opportunity if we all tackle it together as part of all it takes to be a truly successful city. We are grateful for the opportunity to be here and look forward to having your questions, inputs, and suggestions. We are especially interested in learning about the vacant buildings in Brooklyn that might house our center. We would uh, also invite you to stop in our current event di discussion group whenever you can. Uh, we want to implement a few things in the population. Uh, as the end the center peer support center peer support center labor resource center improvement center transitional center education center and addiction support support center thank you very much sir thank you mr chairman council I, uh, I first of all i want to thank you pastor that was that was really that was a really good summary thank you and, uh, I know you're also working with other clergy members as well, and uh, you know I, I, what I what I was amazed at uh, first of all is is the the caring people that day when Shirley and I showed up, and one of the things that I hadn't even thought of is that um, your church allows um, homeless people to utilize computers uh, relative to generating resumes. It's nothing I ever thought of in my entire life. It's, it's it makes sense to me, and I think uh, I think most people probably wouldn't wouldn't think about that. Um, so so kudos to you. Uh, you know, I think the intent of this resolve was to get the discussion points going, get the ball rolling, as they say. Uh, so that w with that being said, I mean, you have my support, and I'm going to uh, pass it on now through the chair to Councilor Isaac. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Mr. Councilor Chairman. Yes. Thank you, Pastor. Um, I have to tell you, the day that I walked into your um, group and sat down with you guys, it really changed, um, it changed my outlook on things, and I look forward to your... Friday morning meetings. Um, they're very interesting and like I said, I look forward to them. So thank you for your presentation and um, the whole purpose of this resolve, like my colleague uh, mentioned, is to bring awareness to everybody and um, hopefully we find this location that you're looking for and we can all work together and I know you have a plan of how to work with other resources in the city to be able to offer our homeless population the um, the aid and need to be able to move their life forward. So um, I w we're working together and we hopefully we get um, 
you know, we get more input from other people and my colleagues also if they have any questions for you or maybe they have any ideas. So thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Bounds. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Pastor, also for, for coming. And I echo my colleagues' uh, sentiments and your good work that you're thank doing you. over there. It's good to know that, that there are active, you know, people actually working in that area. Um, your building, it's across the street from, what, what's the name of the church across the street? Uh, Keys of the Kingdom. That's right, Keys. Um, they own your building, correct? Yes, they do. Okay. Now, are you aware that they are trying to get... Um, their building, your building, and a building behind uh, Mount Moriah on Green Street on the Federal uh, Parks Register? No, I... Okay. Yeah, I, I know that there was some effort with them a few years ago. I was working with, uh, with one of the parishioners over there to get those buildings on the Federal Parks Register to make them uh, eligible for federal monies and grants and all these other kinds of things. Um, so I just want to you know, suggest to you that you maybe talk to Elder Burton about that, uh, Apostle Burton, Thank you. to see Thank if that's you, something you can look into. Um, because I'm looking at your proposal, and then I actually went on the website for the Calgary um, yes, Homeless Pro I Project. Did, yeah. That's more along the lines of a foundation, right? That's right. Okay, so yeah, you're going to have to get money and all of those things and... Yes. Okay. So now you're looking at some of the properties in the area to house this program? That's right. Okay. All right. So it, now, and another thing too, uh, it was mentioned about the, in the Calgary proposal, about the housing first model, uh, that they employ that in Calgary. No, not the, the house first. No, we're looking... No, no, housing first. It's, it's like a, a work program um, that, they, that they employ yeah, in they Calgary do, yes. to kind of oh. get people back to work using these resumes and things like that. That's right, yes. Okay. And um, are you aware that the Mainspring House, so I, I don't know if they're still doing it. I know they were doing it at one time, but they definitely had people enrolled in their housing first programs and trying to get them, like I said, you know, employed and get them into um, off the chronic homelessness. Uh, situation. Are you aware that they were doing that at least at one time? Yes, they do that. That is okay. Mainspring. I have uh, some people uh, that work for the uh, Mainspring that work with us in this project. Oh, oh, good. That was going to be my next question um, to see if you were collaborating with. Uh, with yeah, them. we are. We are collaborating with the uh, Mainspring. Uh -huh. um, um, short to short, representative representative is here today. Uh, Mission uh, Network. Teen Challenge comes every Tuesday to do outreach at the church with the homeless we have. And I have a, a slideshow that I would like to show you, just take a minute, to show you how can we make the Perkins Park look, a family place. Oh, okay. Uh, whenever the chairman allow me to do it. Very good. Go ahead. Thank you. <coughs> Yeah, I thought it was, yeah. Oh, it was. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, I, I was concentrating here, trying to do my best in my English. That's, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, but is, uh, really, we can make a big difference. Okay. And I believe that we, I cannot do it, but we can do it. Okay. It's our, a job for one person. Right. It's for the whole city to get together and work together, and we will be able to make a difference and really, I believe, achieve the goal that the whole city wants to have, you know, the city with the homeless that have a place to go during the day instead of be carrying their belongings all day long in the city. And as I saw the taxes, you know, we need business, business to come here. And that would be a great opportunity to invite business to come here if we can help the homeless get their lives together and not be in the, in the street. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, thank Pastor, you, and thank you to thank your you. parishioners as well and your volunteers. Any other questions for the Pastor while he's here? Councils? Councils thank Sullivan you. Or? Nope. Mr. Chairman, uh, with that being said, first of all, I want to thank the Pastor. I want to thank everybody that came here for this important resolve. I want to thank Councilor Azak. Uh, and with that being said, I want to make a favorable recommendation back to the full City Council. Second. 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 Motion's been made. Second. It goes back to the full City Council. All in favor? All opposed goes back to the City Council with a favorable recommendation. And we thank you, Pastor, and thank you, staff, for coming. And, and it's not falling on deaf ears. Thank you very much, sir. All right, thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, Madam Clerk, item, item number one. Order, appropriation $30,000 from the Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection, Mass DEP grant for purposes of the Sustainable Materials Recovery Program and the Small Scale Recycling Initiative. 
to Refuse Department Recycling Containers and Small Scale Initiative Grant Fund. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Lawrence Raleigh, DPW Commissioner, Patrick Sullivan, Refuse Contract Administrator. Good evening. Good evening, Good evening Mr. Commissioner. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Good. How are you? Good. Any Councils, this is pretty simple. It's a no match grant from DEP that we applied for in the spring and we were granted it about a month ago. This is for all recyclables at the recycle center, which we could purchase. Motion to recommend favor. Again. Motion has been made and seconded to recommend favor. Back to the full city council. All in favor of that? Opposed? Goes back to the full city Thank council. Thank you. Favor recommendation. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Madam Clerk, we'll go to item number two. Order that the city council approves the execution of the proposed 20-year agreement between the city and Stonehill College. This agreement provides the term and conditions under which the city would provide sewer services to the college. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, Philip Nazarella, Chief City Solicitor, Lawrence Raleigh, DPW Commissioner, Reverend John Denon, President Stonehill College, Jean Finlayson, Treasurer Stonehill College, Thomas Flynn, General Counsel Stonehill College. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Council Sullivan. If I could, I want to go on record if I could through the clerk. Um, I have a family member employed by Stonehill College, thus I will be recusing myself from this agenda item. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Council. And, uh, Council, I also received a letter um, uh, this afternoon in regards to uh, Attorney Nazarola not being able to be present here, but in, and, um, as he's indicated, because he, he, um, he abstains from the involvement that he has uh, also with Stonehill College, so he, he feels that he should not be part of the discussions here this, uh, this evening. So if anyone has any other questions pertaining uh, to anything with him, he'd be glad to answer them, but um, he just does not feel that uh, he was a part of that whole negotiation session. So with that being said, we have, um, and if the mayor wants to speak first, I would think he probably would. Mayor Carpenter, good evening. Good evening, Mr. Uh, President, Welcome and I guess back. I would say remaining counselors. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. If I could, I'd just like to take a moment or two to give just a general overview of the agreement and a little bit of uh, insight into uh, my thoughts on uh, signing off on this and submitting it to you for approval. Uh, and then we'll, we've got the whole team here and plus the Stonehill folks also all available to answer uh, specific questions. Uh, I think it's been clear for some time that the old agreement was an agreement that needed updating and changes and over the years since 1996 had become less and less favorable to the city of Brockton. Uh, the agreement that you've got in front of you represents a lot of hard work uh, by both sides, by the Stonehill College representatives and by our negotiating team representing the city. Uh, it represents about a year and a half of negotiations on and off to get to the point where we had an agreement that both sides felt was fair. Generally speaking right now there are 60 individual meters at Stonehill College and we are billing for sewer although they are east and water meters we are billing for sewer individually individual bills for each individual meter at each building. So we're issuing 60 individual bills for 60 meters on the Stonehill campus. Under this new agreement, 25 of those meters will be aggregated and billed as one bill at the appropriate block rate. So almost half of the meters will now be lumped together and billed as one bill for those 25 meters under the appropriate block rate. Uh, it's almost half, and it's, it's a compromise at the end of a year and a half of hard work. Uh, but in addition to that, after those 25 are aggregated for one bill, the other 35 remain being billed individually. At the bottom of the bill, there will now be a 7.5% surcharge on the entire bill, whether it's coming from individual meters or aggregated meters. And from our standpoint, I thought this was important for the Brockton ratepayers to see that because we were selling this uh, sewer to a private entity outside the Brockton sewer district, that there was an agreement to pay uh, a premium or an out-of-district surcharge. So the second calculation is then the addition of the 7.5% surcharge. When you combine those two things together, 
it generates a rate increase of just over 22 percent. So it's a 22 percent rate increase, give or take a little, depending on their actual usage each year. Um, and I believe that that is a substantial uh, increase in revenue to the city. Uh, and it certainly is favorable to the city. Now beyond the, the new rate calculation that results in a 22 percent rate increase, we were able to resolve several outstanding issues that had developed over the years, in essence addressing some issues specifically that are not addressed specifically in the current agreement. And that is requiring City of Brockton authorization for any new hookups, the payment of the appropriate new hookup fee if the city does authorize the new hookup, and also a requirement that Stonehill uh, will maintain their own uh, leak detection system on, on their side, what's called I&I. &I. So to uh, identify, address, and prevent infiltration of stormwater into the sewer, which we would then be processing <coughs> through our plant, and it's obviously not coming in through the meter. We're not charging for it. I think those were three critical, and I don't want to say the word loopholes, but I think that they were areas that were not addressed and was leaving the city in an unfavorable position. And now it's part of the formal agreement that Stonehill agrees to seek authorization before adding new hookups to pay the appropriate fee and to maintain an INI &I system. Uh, and then finally, and, and I think on that basis, uh, the numbers would stand on their own and it would be a good deal. But in addition to that, uh, how we were able to really finally come to terms on this is we received a commitment from Stonehill College to provide scholarship funds in the amount of $150,000 per year designated for Brockton students. And I think that this is really a critical piece because this is going to create opportunities for young people from the city of Brockton who can qualify academically to be admitted to Stonehill, but maybe whose financial package is not enough to cover the entire expense, that there'll be a pool of scholarship money uh, that they can apply each year to obtain scholarship funds from that money. I think it creates opportunities. Uh, for um, our students and I think and I'm not going to speak for Stonehill but I think from their perspective it's very consistent with their mission as a Catholic college uh, and I think that this was an area that we both agreed that we had a shared mutual interest in creating opportunities for young people growing up in the city of Brockton and it gave them an opportunity to expand their commitment and it gave us an opportunity to provide this pool of funds. I mean, over the 20-year agreement, it's almost $3 million of scholarship money for Brockton kids. So based upon the fact that this generates about a 22% rate increase, uh, the fact that we've addressed a number of outstanding issues, I feel, settled in favor of the city, uh, and the fact that the scholarship fund is created, that when you look at the entire package, uh, this is a fair deal and it's favorable to the city. Uh, and I would, uh, my one quick final point, and I'll turn this over to the, uh, the other individuals. I am here standing in front of you today telling you that I think this is the best final agreement that we can get to with Stonehill College after a year and a half of hard work. I think they, they do have other options. And if we're not able to ratify this uh, agreement, I believe they will pursue other options. And that will ultimately uh, result in a loss of uh, about a quarter of a million dollars of revenue a year that we're receiving from Stonehill right now. And if we were to lose that revenue, we would have to pass that quarter of a million per year on to the, the Brockton ratepayers because the fixed expenses really don't change whether we're selling some sewer to Stonehill or not. Um, so based upon all of those things, I would uh, respectfully ask the council uh, as the FinCom tonight uh, to recommend this favorably back to the full council. I think it's a, uh, a fair deal for both sides and I think it really uh, is favorable to the city of Brockton. So I have with me here tonight, obviously we've got uh, the CFO, Jay Condon, 
first assistant city solicitor Kate Federoff is here, a DPW commissioner uh, Larry Rowley is here, uh, along with the contingent from Stonehill. So in terms of, depending how deep you want to get into the minutia going through the agreement, we've got the appropriate people here uh, to answer those questions for you. And I'll uh, defer back to the council president. Thank, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think uh, a couple of questions, Mr. Mayor. I think Council Monahan, you had a question of the mayor? Yep. Sure. <coughs> Good evening, Mr. Mayor. I brought everyone else to answer the questions. <laughs> Um, I will be voting um, favorably on this agreement. Um, and I like the new hookups. You're going to have to have the pet fee for that. We'll know when they're coming in. That's a big thing uh, as far as I'm concerned because I'm actually doing work for my, myself up there doing dig safes. I would see all these buildings going up and what have you, wondering what <coughs> is going on for that. So that's, that's a good thing you've got that in there. And the scholarship money, I think that's, uh, I think Council Cruz was pushing for that big time. Uh, I'm glad you got that in. Uh, question though. So you're talking like $3 million in scholarship over the 20 years. And just an, an, an idea, the amount of money that we would have gotten if it was just a one meter issue going in there compared to what we've gotten in this agreement, which I am happy with, <coughs> is there a, do you have a, like a, a, a difference? Yeah, with, with the scholarship money, the total actually exceeds what the one meter number would be. So in essence, we're getting a total value that's actually a little more than what the one meter rate would be. We're agreeing to accept some of it in scholarship money for our kids. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Uh, so it's one of the reasons I do support it. But the total value of the package slightly exceeds what the one meter rate would be. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Jim. Thank you. Councilor Stewart. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Uh, so, Mr. Mayor, thank you for continuing the work that uh, Councillor Petty saw to be so important. And knowing that he supports the agreement, I think, um, weighs a lot on my decision uh, to support this as well. Uh, also, knowing that you are a tough negotiator, so I'm sure that you've uh, done well for this. You can city. ask Mr. Dillon about I'm that. I'm certain. Um, and then also, knowing Mr. Dillon uh, and um, his history to the city, uh, I think, also brings value to this agreement. Um, I've done a lot of work with Stonehill College and Corey Dogan over there, who's part of the community service learning, and his group has done a lot of work in Brockton with young people coming here and, um, you know, sharing their expertise and uh, giving to Brockton and also allowing Brockton to give back to Stonehill. So I know there's a rich partnership between the two institutions, and so uh, we certainly want to come to an agreement that both parties are happy with. It seems like we've done that. I had uh, two questions about the agreement, and I uh, read this initially, and I haven't seen it. And I, I read it when it was initially circulated. Um, and so forgive me if I don't remember this. But the issue of the scholarship. So the, these are additional monies on top of scholarships that may have been given to Brockton kids to begin with. I wasn't. I'm not sure to understand what the verification mechanism is. Well, I know that. Kate, does the word additional or something like that is in that agreement somewhere? Right. Yeah. There, there is a, a line in the agreement with the word in there that it indi indicates that this is new scholarship money and we're not supplanting existing right. scholarships. How do we verify that, I guess, is what I'm not understanding in the agreement. Well, we're going to be the ones that award it. So um, in, in partnership with Stonehill, I believe the agreement calls for a committee headed by the Brockton Superintendent of Schools to award the scholarships. So the Brockton Superintendent of Schools will have first-hand knowledge of everyone's financial aid package and would have access to know if there was money received in scholarship money from Stonehill in the previous okay, so year. Okay, maybe I should be a little bit more detailed in the question. So let's assume that, uh, so are we basing what existed previously on historical trends from Stonehill? So if... No, I think we, I think we negotiated over a pot of money. I, I think that we agreed that there could be a pool of money that Stonehill would create to help. How I really envision this, and, and it could go the whole range, there's a minimum scholarship award of $7,500. But I think it's designed to be flexible and it's designed to have this review committee because I think that there are a lot of people, a lot of young adults graduating, graduating out of Brockton that may qualify for a pretty good financial aid package, but not good enough to pay the full cost of going to Stonehill. And if they can qualify academically for admission, this would give them uh, a pool of money to apply for an additional scholarship from 
to help make up the difference in the gap between what their financial aid package is and what the full cost of attending Stonehill is. So I think that the amount of the award could vary greatly between each student. Uh, I think it, it allows the committee to look at both um, need and academic excellence. I think it's a great incentive uh, for young people uh, attending Brockton Public Schools to know that if they're, you know, if, if, if the parent or parents are afraid that now you can't dream about Stonehill, we'll never afford that place. I think now they know that there's an opportunity that if they, if they're good citizens and they pull good grades and they can be admitted at Stonehill, that there's an opportunity to apply for additional uh, scholarship money. Okay. I, I still don't think, Mr. Mayor, I'm, I'm not getting the answer that I'm looking for. So, yeah. so let, let me... I didn't promise you the answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let me under understand this, phrase this differently. So if, there, if, so if Stonehill has historically given annually $10 worth of scholarships to students, there's an additional fund of another $10 a year, which is essentially what the agreement says. Um, but I'm not understanding how we're verifying that the $10 of new monies. Okay. I guess the verification itself is not specifically addressed in the That's agreement. That's what I thought. Um, other than the fact that the superintendent of schools is the one that, the superintendent of schools is the chair of the committee though, right? Is that right? right? Yeah. So it's the Brockton superintendent of schools that chairs the selection committee. So our superintendent is going to have full access to what each of these students' financial aid packages looks like, it would know if there was. Uh, yeah, but it seems to me that Stonehill could have the option of uh, saying, okay, these are Brockton kids that we are giving financial aid to. We know we have to commit to this additional $10. So, what we're going to do is reduce their initial financial aid by $5. So, I'm just, I'm not understanding. Maybe the attorney can come and help me understand. What That's a good idea. What the verification process is in the contract because I didn't see it. So there is no specific verif verification process. Obviously, we're acting um, both of us in good faith to work that they're not going to reduce their existing scholarships so to subsidize what they owe in terms of the scholarships that are due as a result of this contract. Okay. Now, understanding that we're all good people, but also good people change over time and who knows who will be at Stonehill 10 years from now or 20 years from now. Sure. Do you not think it's worth having some kind of verification scheme uh, in the contract itself? Do I think it's worthwhile? Um, probably it just wasn't contemplated by the parties because mm -hmm. at this point we didn't foresee that they would reduce the, the, the existing scholarships. It wasn't on our brains. It was always thought of as being an addition to what they already give. Mm -hmm. um, Right. So that concerns me because I don't, I don't know how we determine what they always give if we're not under... Okay, so that my other... Perhaps Mr. Dillon has something yeah. to say. Yeah, please. He may be able to fill in the blanks for you, Council. You're going down. You're going down. <laughs> you're going down. The verification would be as simple as this. And it's in the addendum to the agreement that it would be new scholarship money. So what we would do with the superintendent as chair of the committee is we would show her the 20 students from Brockton High School that are attending Stonehill now. And then each year she would get a report of what they got in scholarships and what came beginning the first year of the scholarship agreement. It will be pretty transparent that there will be more money given out to the incoming freshmen from Brockton High School this coming year than there were to the rising sophomores. And that will That'll increase every year. I see. And I can pledge, I, and I won't be around for a <laughs> but I can pledge to you this. Somebody from Stonehill should proudly go to the superintendent of schools every year because it's in our interest and it's our desire to recruit more students from the city of Brockton. I mean, I've been around 46 years at Stonehill College. Stonehill College was founded by the guys at first and then the young men and young women from Brockton High School that walked and took the bus and took their cars to Stonehill. If you look at the history of the city and you see superintendents of schools, members of the city council, members of the school committee, leaders in education, leaders in industry, that's why I hope in five years everybody has to recuse themselves from Stonehill because they're so connected <laughs> to it. <laughs> but um, it, it is faith, but it's also in the agreement that it will be uh, reviewed every year by the superintendent of schools. It will be evident that the dollar figure will grow every okay. year. That's important. The other That's thing that should be mentioned is that it calls for an increase in that. The mayor didn't even calculate this into 
what he said over 20 years, but every year that the tuition goes up, and that's almost like every year. Taxes. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. That the scholarship dollars amount go up by that much. So if we increase tuition 3% three three the scholarship dollars available for that coming year will also go up by 3%. Okay, I appreciate My that. guess is we will exceed that dollar goal significantly every year because it's in our interest to get more and more students from the city of Brockton coming to Stonehill. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Dillon. And I asked the question because I, I just re reflect on the Aquaria contract and um, I'm more keen to understanding how we enforce what's in agreements um, than what's written there. Um, and so my second question is um, maybe to the attorney or to the mayor, I'm not really certain. So, for example, if Stonehill, um, this, the system to monitor leaks in the system, uh, so what if that's not fulfilled? If that agreement isn't fulfilled, what's, what's the penalty for, for one party not um, living up to its agreement? Well, we agreed in the <laughs> sorry, we agreed in the agreement that um, we would go to AAA arbitration in the event of a dispute. Um, so there's a dispute mechanism built into the contract, um, which also serves the purpose that we've had incidents, not with Stonehill, but with other out-of-town users not paying their bill and we're recovering interest. So we're trying, right. we did attempt to try to close all those loopholes. Um, you know, they're responsible for their own I and I, and we can monitor that by just their discharge. But they've shown themselves to be number one green generally, um, having a solar field mm -hmm. to help subsidize their mm -hmm. electric use and, and whatnot. So it's in their best interest to maintain um, <coughs> well equipped pipes. So. Right. <laughs> that I, I maybe shall not wasn't comment. the best I shall turn not of the phrase. <laughs> Okay, I understand. I appreciate it. And so I do support the agreement. Uh, those were my two concerns that I didn't quite understand um, my reading of the contract, uh, if they were present or not. But I think part of any agreement is you, there's a bit of confidence in both parties coming together to do the right thing. Uh, so congratulations with the mayor on getting this uh, to this point and to the folks at Stonehill for uh, helping to make that possible. Thank you, Mr. Jeffers. Thank you, Council Stu. Council Rodriguez. Oh. Oh, you no, I'm going to ask something else. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Mayor, if I could just ask you a quick question. No, I just want to be on record that I, too, will support the, uh, the agreement because I think it's long overdue. And um, quite a few uh, folks that are at home uh, are saying it's about time we're doing something about this. But my, my question to you is, and uh, I think Councilor Stewart brought up the, uh, the Aquaria and the Aquaria issues that we're having here in the city with the 20-year agreement. Uh, was there any discussion in terms of um, seeking a lesser number of years in terms of an agreement? Because I, I, yeah, I, I don't see you know, that it makes a lot of sense to saddle a future administration, a future council with a contract that sometimes uh, 20 years is a long time. Uh, chances are I'm not going to be around, uh, n at least not sitting here anyways. But I, I'm just thinking, you know, out loud in the sense and noticing that 20 years to settle an agreement that has actually no uh, increase in increments of any kind might be, um, might be a little too long. So was there any discussion to do something a little lesser? Yeah. Uh, first of all, Councillor, um, so all the terms of the agreement were negotiated pretty vigorously. And, you know, I didn't mention, but I think it's probably important to note that this uh, our first time around uh, in 2014, after about six months of negotiations, we agreed to part company without an agreement. And that was the time uh, just before I sent you a copy of a legal notice that I sent to Stonehill notifying them that we did not, uh, we did not intend to extend the agreement beyond the September 2016 date that we were um, obligated to. It was, there was a period of time where we didn't talk, and then this year, um, <coughs> I think you called me first, Fran, but it's not that it's really important, but Mr. Dillon reached out to me and said, do you think we could take another run at this? And so we did, so there was a whole second round of negotiations. So I, I, the reason I mention that, Councillor, is this wasn't something we sat down one day and scratched out on the back of a notepad. There was a lot of hard work on both sides for a long time to get to something that both sides felt was fair. 
never acrimonious, always professional, always professional I think would be a good word, polite would be a good word, um, but with both sides I think negotiating very hard for what they felt the issues that were important to them. I think Stonehill uh, needed a, a long-term commitment. This is like a capital asset and I think they didn't want to be back at the table every five years. Uh, I think, you know, maybe we might have preferred a 10 or 15 year deal. I think they would have preferred a 30. That's how we ended up at 20. Um, however, any, it's not fair to say that there's no increase because in this agreement, any water rate, uh, any sewer rate increases that the city of Brockton declares are passed through to Stonehill. Their bill will go up proportionately with any sewer rate increase we have and in fact if you think about it because of that seven and a half percent surcharge their increase would actually be more of an increase than the average Brockton uh, sewer user would have so there is a mechanism uh, not to just increase on them individually but any sewer rate increases that we do institute are passed through and proportionally they'll actually pay even a little higher increase no, but the reason why I'm bringing that up is because with with the scholarship, which is, I mean, it, I have a concern, but I think uh, Councillor uh, Monaghan is going to ask a question that relates to this. Uh, we all know that the uh, the call. Can I? Yeah, go ahead. Um, you all, we all know that the the minority makeup of Stonehill College is abysmal. Uh, I don't know exactly what those numbers are, and the folks from Stonehill can actually kind of, po you know, possibly address that. Is that I strongly feel that although there's funds committed to scholarships in the city, uh, there's really not a great deal of an effort that will go into play to at least satisfy me that the diversity of the college will change. Um, I have some relationships with the college as well and they do some work here in the community with some of the organizations that I belong to. But as far as the, the makeup of the school itself, uh, it's not a very diverse school. And there's actually nothing in the contract that says that even an effort will be made to provide, I mean we do know that the, the Brockton Public School is somewhat around 70 plus percent minority nowadays. Uh, it's, it's actually a little <coughs> over 80. Well, let's call it 79, 80. Let's call it in the 70s, just, just for the sake of argument. But yet, at the same time, there's nothing in here that says an effort will be put into play to help some of these minority students, because it says it's based on their academic standing and/or financial need. Right. So when I when I see that, and we do know that some of the minority kids that we deal with in this community come from homes where the uh, the playing field isn't leveled. So I was actually looking for something that would say, you know what, a strong effort will be put into play to kind of help some of the, the minority students that we have in this community to actually, A, get a decent, a very good education from Stonehill, but at the same time to get some help in attending college. And that's the reason why I'm bringing this up is that we do have a 20-year agreement that sets it in stone, basically, the uh, $150,000 there's no wiggle room in the sense that says that it's going to go one way or the other and that's the concern that I'm well, bringing it's over a, the 20 year yep, contract. Not, versus I, he, I hear the concern contract. counselor. Um, first of all it's a guaranteed minimum of 150,000 phased in over the first four years and then remaining at a minimum of 150,000. As Mr. Dillon mentioned anytime there's a tuition rate increase the pool of scholarship money increases by the same percentage. So if they raise tuition 3% next year, the pool of scholarship money increases by 3%. I think getting at your concerns uh, around diversity, uh, I can only speak to the Brockton part of the equation. Uh, and I think that an important factor for us was that Stonehill was willing to allow the selection committee to be chaired by the Brockton school superintendent. So I think in terms of admission standards, certainly they still have their admissions department, but in terms of which students qualify each year for the scholarship money, that really is going to be a Brockton decision with input from Stonehill, but it's going to be a Brockton decision. So I think I think there is a mechanism in there that because of the fact the Brockton School Superintendent chairs that selection committee, 
that you know I have confidence that this superintendent and future superintendents would advocate for all the Brockton students and make sure there was opportunities for all. Uh, as you said, the the non-white uh, percentage of students at Brockton High School today is about 80 percent. So the pool of students that this money is available to is about 80 percent non-white. And we've got the Brockton superintendent chairing this selection committee. And I think it's also important to note, and I, I, I'm sure Mr. Dillon can state this for himself too, uh, but when we put this on the table, Stonehill embraced it. This wasn't something we had to really twist their arm for. They were actually intrigued by the idea when we put it on the table. I think it came down to negotiating a number that we felt was sufficient, that they felt they could commit to every year. Um, but I do believe that their commitment to Brockton students is sincere. Uh, I think they do already do a lot of good work in the city. And I think, as I said, I think we figured out very quickly that the scholarship fund really was a shared mutual interest that we want to create opportunities for Brockton students to maybe have a chance to attend a college like Stonehill, but they also equally want uh, to bring more Brockton kids to Stonehill. And uh, so I, I think that they're just as committed to this as we are. It's not like we had to wring it out of them. There, there was some negotiation around the number, but when we put the idea on the table, they, they embraced it, and that's really what got us finally to be able to get to a settlement after a little over a year and a half. But I, I hear your concerns, Councillor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Cruz. Thank you. Uh, I think you know how much in favor of this I am, but I do think uh, some of the issues about the, uh, as I read this, it says here that the superintendent or his or her designee may provide comment and input, but final selection will be by, at the discretion of the college. So the, the yeah, college makes the final decision on who it is. But it's a, it's a committee chaired by the superintendent that makes the recommendations. Here, and I don't yeah. think it's going to be an issue, no. but it's clearly written that the college will make the final decision, not, not the superintendent or their committee. They will have input. Right. Now, I think, I, and as the father of a son who graduated from Stonehill, um, you know, I do believe that we do want to see more minority faces uh, at the college, and I think just by the very nature of the pool of people we're talking about, it will it will grow up, uh, uh, it, it will start to change. Um, and I'm glad to see that it's written in the form of scholarship and grant. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, if I could ask, if Mr. Dillon could come up for, for a minute and just kind of for the public and kind of for me, but I've been through this. Uh, what is the difference between scholarship or grant? Apparently a scholarship is based on the academ academic performance of the student in high school, and a grant is based on financial need. So the, the, the grant part is basically, so it's, and it's all in this case, there'll be no loans, this is all? No loans from us, no. This is all money that... Uh, and grants that would not have to be repaid in any way. In any way. It also would be, in most cases, part of a package. So a student who got the Brockton scholarship or the Brockton grant, in all likelihood, if they were needy students, would get federal aid, possibly state aid, and possibly additional Stonehill aid. It does us no good to provide a scholarship that's, say, worth $17,000 if the student coming, the family needs $35,000. Exactly. So again, the proof has got to be in the pudding. You're going to see more students from Brockton High School coming to Stonehill as a result of this program because we're working with our admissions office and our financial aid office. Sometimes it's people just don't understand the whole system, especially if they're first generation going to college, like a lot of us in this room were. You know, my father went to the sixth grade. He didn't know what the heck a college was. But we're dealing with families like that today. But Stonehill has the resource, the human resources, to help families through these really complicated processes of applying for financial aid and applying for scholarships. Stonehill, uh, it's not in the agreement that this is for uh, diversity students. But I will tell you this. Our strategic plan that was just adopted by the Board of Trustees says one of our top priorities is to continue to grow the diversity of the college. I'm almost embarrassed to say that in 2000, Stonehill was rated as one of the whitest colleges in New England with 1% diversity. This past year, our freshman class was 17% diversity. Nothing to wave a flag about, but it shows you the direction that we're going. And it makes sense for Stonehill to provide quality education to all citizens uh, of the country, but also certainly of this city. 
and it is our intent to grow the diversity. If we're preparing people for lives and work in this century, we better prepare them in diversity as well. So it, again, part of it you have to take it on faith. Uh, we're a Catholic college, so faith means a lot to us, and our decisions are often based on faith. But I think we have a, a history of following through on our word, and I, I really do look forward to the opportunity to coming back to this council in a year and in two years, and after that we'll see. But to show you the great progress that, that we've made because of the sewer. <laughs> And the mayor did a great job of outlining it, and it, it, uh, the way he outlined it, I'm saying, why did we agree to this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is, I think it's a very good deal for the city and a very fair deal for Stonehill because it accomplishes what is in our best interest, interest as well. So I, I hope you all sure. will seek to support it. And just one comment before I finish. I think Go tonight's on. a perfect example of what Brockton can be. So hopefully Chris Cooney and yourself and the Reverend can get together. You can supply the students to do the work with the homeless, and Chris Cooney can find them a building, and we'll have, <laughs> yes. we'll have solved this whole thing. So it's really because of the city council we're going to solve that issue. So you three get together before you leave tonight. <laughs> Sounds like so. a plan. Thank you, Mr. Thank President. You. Thank you, Council. Thank you. Councilor Monaghan, are you all set? Or did you no, I'm, I'm, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to uh, approve to send back to the full city council. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the full city council for the favorable recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, for all your work, and thank you, gentlemen from Stonehill College. We appreciate all that's been done here, and uh, and look forward to continue working relationship with uh, with you as well. Thank you very much, councilors. Just before we uh, close up, I believe our clerk put on your table uh, there were some postponements that were made in 2015, as well as items that were tabled. That's been dated, and those that filed resolve, I just bring it to your attention to the fact that if we do not uh, move on any of them, and I think a couple of them we actually resolve, but if we do not move on any of these items, they will, as we say, pass away with the legislative year, which will end um, when our term ends. So if you want any of these items to be placed on the next uh, finance meeting for December the 21st, you need to tell me so that I can do that. If not, they will just remain there, and they will, um, they will just... Uh, Excuse me, just, they will just uh, remain there and, and as I say they'll pass with a legislative year. Council Rodriguez. Uh, the order from May 18th. Yes. 15. Strategies and uh, 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 that was in regards to, I believe, I believe that was one that we left there because at that point in time we were not, um, we did not know still, we were still discussing other issues pertaining to, right. and we're still in litigation. I think that's why we left wanted, it there. I just don't want to let it die though. Yeah. Um, I would think, you know what, I will talk to, because it was through our legal counsel, Attorney Gilday, that asked for it to be done that way. So I will talk to him and find out what we do in that case. Thank you. All right, just to check on that one, okay? Um, Anything Mr. Else? Chairman, Councilor Azak. a moment of personal privilege. Yes, and just, um, just before I finish, anything else on this, and then I'll take you a moment of no. personal privilege. Anything uh, else regarding this? I actually have one. Uh, the resolve that um, I requested, 615, so right. can, that can die now, and then we can That'll just go, do it yeah, again next you re, session? You refile the next session. Come January, you can put it okay. before. You may have, a, may have more of a uh, you know, confined date to when you can bring him in, so it'll work. Yeah, you just do it that way, okay? So... Any other councilors? If you have any questions uh, with any of them, if not, it'll, it'll, just, it'll just pass on. So, Councilor Azak, yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Actually, I would just like to take a few moments to wish uh, one of my constituents a happy birthday. It's a special birthday. Mr. Charles Dwyer will be turning 100 this Thursday, December 10th. So, happy 100th birthday. Yeah. That's great. Happy birthday to him. Yes. Wow. And I failed to mention... Councilor elect from Ward 5 has been sitting in the audience. It's the quietest she's been. Oh, I didn't mean that, Ann. God bless you, honey. <laughs> Don't and worry, give it time. Councilor elect from Ward 5, and uh, she has been Thank here all genius. night, <laughs> taking both meetings. So, and uh, looks forward to uh, joining us uh, in a very short time. Thank you for coming tonight, Councilor elect. Appreciate it. Appreciate it very much. City Council meeting will be um, next Monday evening, and then again the FinCon will be December 21st, and then we'll have our final City Council meeting for December uh, 28th. Anything else to come before us this evening? Seeing none, this meeting is adjourned.